to go right to the end of the process. And this is what will be uh, presented by uh, Rudolf Fleur. Uh, Rudolf Fleur, uh, again, also um, originated from doing his master thesis on federated analytics over fair uh, patient health data. And in his uh, PhD, he has proceeded to uh, really look at models for a statistical sound um, uh, surveillance uh, of data that are held within um, health facilities in which these data reside. And so that means that principally, you don't bring all of this data together in one central place, but your uh, analysis, your modeling, really needs to be suitable to a, fragment, a fragmented uh, data setup. So Rudwan is uh, one of uh, uh, our team uh, who really can give excellent explanations. I think if, if you had the floor for two hours, we would also <laughs> really all benefit from that. Today, you can only present on that very specialized uh, one part of you, but uh, the purpose is really that, that, that we all, before the coffee break, get an idea of what is the horizon of this. If you're looking at this in, uh, in five years' time, what are we then capable of uh, doing? So over to you, Rudra. Uh, okay, so I'm told to talk around here, just so everyone can hear it. And can I have control here, just with the space bar? Okay, perfect. Uh, and there's yeah. no animation since PDF, but uh, I'm sure that will be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, learning from distributed data. Um, so maybe first, like, what do I mean with learning? Um, with learning, I mean to take like a piece of external data and then being able to integrate it into your own context. So of course, all the data comes from external context. And so in that way, you're learning. This also gives like a context to all like the hype around AI, etc. cetera. Uh, all we're doing is learning representation for that internal knowledge process uh, that you can use to reason about things, to make conclusions, make decisions. Um, so to just give a little bit of an overview, it's a bit annoying, I can't see it here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I will uh, try to deal with that. Um, I will need to quickly see. Um, yeah, so one of, the, one of the key challenges is that, of course, science is continually progressing. So we need to continually learn, continually update our own process, also our models, um, our reasoning, our methodology. Um, and apart from that, we are more and more integrating mixed data. That means um, like not only different formats of data, um, but also data from different sources, um, from different places and different access levels. Uh, these all give their own unique challenges. Uh, and also, of course, very relevant, the regulatory part of that, especially in international corporations, very relevant um, when we do research, when we implement things that are gonna be actually used in the field. And we need to make sure it's compliant, uh, can be quite annoying, can be quite complicated, but it's important. It's also important to not only look at the current compliance, but also see, is it possible to comply in the future? Uh, is your solution or your thought, um, is it dynamic enough that with future more stringent rules like the recent AI Act, uh, are you still going to be able to deal with that? Um, yeah, so a lot of things are done currently in distributed data, but simply pulling together data, uh, very simple, like ask people to send you like a zip file uh, with like uh, CSVs or with uh, images or with documents, pull them all together, do your analysis. Um, yeah, it's totally fine if you're like uh, within an organization where that is normal. Um, if you want to work across organizations, that becomes increasingly annoying. Um, if you have a very large organization, um, like especially like for example, government or a Fortune 500, um, yeah, that becomes infeasible. You get all these little silos for their own data. Uh, it also becomes, uh, yeah, syncing this data together becomes quite an infeasible process, results in a lot of errors. Um, a better way to deal with this, um, well, not exclusively better, um, is to do local analysis. So you have all this separated, isolated piece of data, and you make sure that they're 
uh, uh, localized analysis on that. Make sure that you know in a local context, is this data correct, is it unique? Uh, and then be able to pull together those results. Um, why is, can this give you advantages? You do not actually have to share the data. So there is no like uh, compliance uh, issues there directly. Um, there's also less risk of data leakage. Uh, it's also a lot easier to make this type of agreements uh, when you're just sharing the aggregates. And those aggregates you can pull together. And uh, this can be quite complicated in some cases uh, for more simple things like KPIs. This is quite an easy process. Um, so this is also an open field of research. I will speed ahead a little bit. So the yeah, the advancement towards data federated learning, of course, is simply the previous process we mentioned, um, then applied to artificial intelligence or machine learning. Uh, so instead of doing your analysis locally and then pulling together, now you train a model locally and then pull it together. Uh, it's a lot more complicated process. Um, this also requires often a centralized unit where a secure format of weights is being shared and then aggregated. Um, but this features a lot of promise in very advanced use cases. And I'll show you one at the end. Um, so because of the animations, this part broke. But this is just a small package that's been developed open source to also contribute to. Um, it's also quite, quite a well-used one nowadays. It's called Flower. And makes it really easy to simulate this kind of federated uh, methodology. Um, yeah, and where does FAIR come into play? And so this is how, how I bought a link. And we have all these pieces of data. It's quite hard when they're all isolated in our own little silos uh, to reason about them. So you want to make sure that there's some kind of knowledge representation available on those. Um, so you can also ask the right questions that you know what kind of data is available at which place. Uh, make sure that the metadata is well described um, for each different data set, for each different data source. Um, and then you can start reasoning about that um, and also, of course, you have to make sure that your knowledge base is set up correctly. It's actually shared across your data in the organization. Uh, this is one of the key points that Photon does really well. Uh, we have well-described data that's available online. You can just see it yourself. Um, but the actually data linking to that knowledge, and those are, of course, more private because it contains sensitive information. But you know that it's based on that knowledge representation. So you can reason about it, you just can't see it. You can ask the right questions. And that's of course important. Uh, I'll, I'll skip the super technical part. <laughs> I'll go to more of my use case because it's gonna, the time is quite uh, strict. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at histopathology um, and why this link to federated learning because it's quite an advanced use case. Um, the data I looked at is uh, the simple hist histopathology. Um, so specifically at the staining part, um, the nice feature about this that is implicitly um, as a classification um, in this data, this is um, data for, let's see if I can, I think I have a description slide in there, <laughs> but it's uh, IPC data. Um, and the darker stains, those are classified uh, as malignant uh, tissue, and the lighter stains are not malignant. And then we have an implicit classification. I actually got this data from Emory, the Cancer Institute in the US. And um, they've also kindly provided um, this kind of data that's chopped up into small parts. And this is a nice feature if you're trying to learn. You may want to learn the parts of the tissue that are like have some issue or the parts of the tissue that do not have an issue and the kind of transition between those. So they have very nicely chopped that data set up for us. Um, and then we have a research process behind this. It's also quite technical, um, but basically what we do is we have a vision model. We try to uh, perform that kind of uh, uh, building that reasoning um, with this process by using all those chopped up parts, the classification that's associated with that, learn its representations, and then be able to reason across the whole image. Like how much percentage do we accept that this malignant tissue? Um, and the paper is also provided of this general outline that studies being used. Um, I just put on top of it this federated layer. 
um, to do this exact learning process that we described in the previous paper on this more generalized uh, federated learning process. So we do the same kind of learning strategy, but then across different isolated facilities. Um, and they all build their own local model. So this is their own private model that they can personally use, but they also contribute to a global model. And the global model gives a knowledge back. And this process keeps continuing that this knowledge is being shared. Um, the nice part about this, the only thing that's being shared is actually the, the weights. It's quite an abstract um, representation. Um, like there are some discussions that this may leak private information, but it's very, very abstract. Um, and I haven't seen any actual practical leakage of data, especially in this kind of complex models. Um, but the idea behind there is that you only share those representations, which are just a chain of numbers. Um, and then from those, you can learn in your own local model. So even facilities that are quite small, they can learn from a very big data pool from other facilities. Um, of course, there's issues there like bias that you have to, pre uh, that you have to prevent. Um, yeah, this is also quite advanced. So just in short, what I'm trying to do here is to incorporate the knowledge that's in graph neural network, um, the whole knowledge representation that we talked about uh, related to FAIR. Um, yeah, and just the study itself, what I'm trying to learn is that latent space. This is the knowledge representation of the model. So it gets an image, it encodes it to some a string of values. And that we can decode, is this malignant tissue, is this not? Uh, what kind of diagnosis should we give this patient? These are all advices, of course, this will be given by clinicians. Um, but the interesting part is how does it integrate this knowledge? How does this integration knowledge change when there's some bias, when one facility is huge and one is small? This is also what we see in Vodan. Um, and these kind of aspects we're trying to investigate, we're trying, trying to measure what happens in this learning process. How do you ultimately share knowledge with each other? And that's kind of the state of the art that we're working on. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. That was brilliant.